Hello, my name is Peter Parfit and welcome to New Book Workshop. Well, as you can see behind me, the uh, place is in a bit of a pickle at the moment. And I'll show you the reason why shortly. Uh, lately, I've been doing uh, all sorts of things outside. We had some fences that came down during a storm uh, and some other bits and pieces, which I'm afraid didn't sort of really uh, provide good subjects for video work. Um, I did make uh, a little present for a friend of mine. Uh, it was a tray like this one. This was the prototype and it had little inlay pieces of maple here and solid wood around a uh, little baby tray just for two cups. Um, I didn't video that at the time because I was in a bit of a rush so my apologies. Now this is the second half of the workshop. Nothing's in here at the moment because I've cleared it all out. That's why it's such a mess over on the other side. And, and the reason I'm doing this is I want to uh, eventually have the option of being able to put a car in here if I need to. And the, the floor was designed so that a car could drive over it with no problem at all. And although this is a chipboard floor, when I built it, I had in mind that I would put a car in here and so the battens are very close together. And also the void between the battens is filled with polystyrene. And polystyrene is quite good at load bearing, provided the load is spread over a reasonable area. Now, what I've done is, in order to prepare for potentially a wet vehicle, is uh, to coat the floor, first of all, with two coats of some clear satin varnish. Now, this is cheap and cheerful stuff that I got from screw fixes, it was not very expensive, but those two coats have gone on and they've gone on really well and I'm happy that this floor is now sealed. And I've put some batten around the edge and there's some mastic underneath it so that should there be a ridiculous amount of water on a car, it won't run down into the gap and potentially go into the drywall. And I'm on the floor, my final coat will be this uh, diamond hard floor paint. It's made by a company called Ron Seal and this is their slate satin. And I'm going to put two coats of this on. And I think all in all that will make the floor sufficiently waterproof so that a, a, a wet car can come in here with no problem at all. And, and I am aware that there is a risk with a wet car coming into this space uh, that the whole atmosphere will become quite moist. But I've got a radiator in here uh, and there's a, a reasonable amount of airflow and so I'm not too worried at this stage about any rust issues. Well, I have to say this uh, uh, slate grey paint goes on really, really well. I'm just doing the cutting in around the edges. I'll then use a roller for the main field of the floor. And it does say on the tin that uh, this uh, floor paint is suitable for both concrete and wood. So I'm quite happy that it's going onto a chipboard floor. Well, this is going on very easily, although <laughs> I wish I'd used a different container for my paint. It's got a hole in the bottom, but it doesn't matter. And uh, I'm just using this small roller because uh, these I can throw away once I've used them. They're very cheap and cheerful. And so once I've finished this first coat, I throw the roller away and I can get a new one out of the packet when I come to do the second coat. You can see how well it covers. It goes on quite light, and as you can see from the cutting in, it then dries a little bit darker, which is fine. Doesn't worry me, that's good. Now this may sound as though I'm teaching you to suck eggs, but if you are doing this, don't paint yourself into a corner. Uh, believe it or not, I have done it once when I was a lot younger and a lot more inexperienced. <laughs> now this uh, little roller is really good, although it's only four inches wide. Uh, it, it does the job, even on a floor like this, so I'm very pleased. The paint itself is really good too. Now this floor of mine is just over 16 square metres in total. And uh, I've got enough in my little tray uh, to finish the bit that I'm standing in now. And that'll be the first coat. And I reckon I've used a fraction over a third of what's in the two and a half litre tin. So 
I reckon that when I come to put the second coat on, it won't need quite so much because it's not covering such a dark area. And that will mean I will then have enough, if I wish, to put a third coat on. Uh, at the moment, it looks as though two coats would probably do, but if I've got some left over, I might just as well use it and make a really tidy job of it. I'm very, very pleased. So well done, Mr. Ron Seal. Well, that's it, or at least that's this stage done. I'll talk more about the next stage shortly. Uh, I'll just remind you, I use this cheap and cheerful uh, clear satin varnish from Screwfix. It's water-based, uh, and I applied several coats of that to the chipboard floor first. And then after that, I used this Ron Seal Diamond Hard Satin Floor Paint, and this is Slate. And this did three coats i think i may have mentioned this is about 16 square meters here and this did exactly three coats i have none left and i just managed it to the end and i'm really happy uh, i've tried giving it a sort of scratch with my fingernail on the floor and i can't seem to make a dent in the surface of the paint so uh, that's really good now i used an ordinary brush for cutting in and i used one of these small rollers uh, on a stick like this. Uh, it's a sponge one and that worked very well. At the end of each session I just threw the sponge roller away because they're cheap enough. And this is the same brush that I use for both the varnish and also for the paint and each time it was really easy to clean. I used warm soapy water and uh, it was cleaned in no time at all. And then I gave it a final little wash with some washing up liquid, rinsed it really well, and you can see this brush is as good as new. Now my next stage, which will be the next video, will be to make some chocks for the front wheels of the car. And the reason I'm doing that is simple. Uh, this garage is only just long enough for the car. I think there's probably about 300 millimeters, about a foot uh, of clearance added up at both ends. So I really want the car to be pretty close to this end wall, but it's only drywall and so uh, I really don't want to be crashing into it. In the old days what I used to do was to hang a tennis ball from the ceiling and when the front of the car hit the tennis ball, round about here, the front of the bonnet, then I would stop. But <laughs> Uh, in those days, I had a, a solid wall and I had a bit of sponge at the end here so that I could just overshoot if I needed to. But I need to be a li little bit cleverer this time. So I'm making these chocks and they'll be fixed to the floor and you drive up to them and the car theoretically shouldn't be able to go any further. And I'll do the positioning of those chocks once the car is in here. Now, I don't want to make uh, the chocks out of concrete or anything like that. I'm going to make them out of wood. I'm going to use a very simple design uh, which you can make yourself and basically all you need is a jigsaw and some strips of wood. Many thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.